ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಪರಂ ಯತ್ ಸಮುದ್ರ ಹಿಮಾದ್ರೇಶ್ಚೈವ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ವರ್ಷಂ ತದ್ ಭಾರತ ನಾಮ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಸಂತತಿ Welcome to all for this session on Skanda Purana to chapter 5 of Kaumarika Khanda under Maheshwara Khanda. In the previous chapter, we were listening to the different types and different details regarding the donation. And after explaining all those things to King Dharma Varma, after enlightening him, because of educating Dharma Varma, Narada has got the land that she had requested and that land is being offered by Dharma Varma. and narada had acquired it in a right way by through the education of dharma varma and then narada said when i said to dharma varma let the wealth remain with you i will get it at the time of need and i came over to the mountain raivata which is basically the mount girnar in gujarat i was delighted to see that excellent mountain which rose up like the hand of the earth beckoning all good men different kind of trees shine on it like the sun's wife and others other members of the household who have the righteous lord of the hands joyous and contented took us food and were like groups were like groups of locals who had acquired good knowledge from an excellent preceptor on the earth the performing penance were were men can obtain whatever they desire like a devotee who desires all that is wishes that he wishes for after resorting to sri mahadeva after reaching the great rocky ridge of that mountain o son of prita He became delighted by the cool breeze of great fragrance. I thought verse in my mind, I have now acquired a spot which ordinarily is very difficult to get. Now I shall begin my attempt for getting the Brahmanas to be settled there. Indeed, those Brahmanas who are considered to be the most deserving of all should be looked for by me. Statements of the ex-founders of Veda are thus heard in this connection. Just as a rudderless boat is incompetent to cross a waterway, so also even an excellent Brahmana is incapable of redeeming others. if he does not practice good conduct the brahmana who does not study scriptural texts is to be a brahmana like the quickly extinguishing grass fire obya the sacrificial offerings should be should not be given to one such kind of person indeed the rite of shavana the sacrificial oblations is not performed on ash but a blazing fire one will conduct a havana on a blazing fire and never been performed on ashes so that way great offer sacrificial offerings that means the donations should never be offered to a brahmana who does not study the scriptural text if preserving persons are ignored and a charitable gift is offered to an undeserving person it is as bad as offering gavakhnika the daily measure of food given to a cow to a donkey that which is supposed to be given to a cow it is like giving it to a donkey after ignoring the cow the charitable gift offered to a fool is transitory in nature and worthless like the seed sown in a barren land or milking cow in a broken pot or a har the havya offered on the ash and not in the blazing fire If a moment monetary gift is offered to an undeserving person and contrary to the injunctions not only does the money so offered vanish but also the remaining merit is destroyed the following things acquired by deserving persons will kill them means will cause harm land and cow will destroy worldly pleasure gold will destroy the body I mean whatever we acquire be given to an undeserving person this is how it destroy them land and cow destroy worldly pleasures gold will destroy the body horse causes harm to the eye and garments bee causes harm to the brilliance and gingelly seeds cause harm to the progeny 
Hence, the person not learned should be afraid of accepting monetary gifts and the like. So, if one is not eligible, one is not capable, and if such a person accepts the above gifts, that is what the harm they will going to get. Even with a small quantity of these, if accepted, unlettered one suffer from pain and disaster like the cow bogged in a marshy place. Hence, a gift offered to the following is everlasting and imperishable. Those with hidden power of penance, those who secretly study and recite the Vedas, those who are devoted only to their wives and those who are tranquil. If gift is offered to a deserving person at proper place and time and the thing so given is acquired by good means, and it, if it is offered with sincerity and ardent faith, that should be the index of good pity. One does not become a deserving person by learning alone or austerities alone. They where there is a good conduct along with these two, people call them deserving persons. Among these three merits, learning is the most important quality. One without learning is like a blind man. Those with learning are considered to be blessed with perfect eyesight. Hence, learned persons, persons with perfect vision should be tested, means found by trust in every land. I will make the gift to those who will answer to my questions. After thinking thus in my mind, I started from that place and visited the hermitage of great sages. O Palguna, I used to sing the following verses in the form of questions. Listen to them. Who knows the matrikas alphabet? How many types? What are the syllables? Which Brahmana knows the five times five wonderful halls? Who knows how to make the multi-formed woman into a single formed one? Which man of the world knows the Chitra, chitra Katha Bandha, which man devoted to mantras and learning knows the great crocodile of the ocean, which excellent Brahmana knows the eightfold Brahmana hood, who will tell the root days, that is the days of beginning of the four yogas, who knows the root days, the first day of the advent of each Manvantara of fourteen Manos. On which day did the sun formerly get his chariot? Who knows what, that, which, that which causes affliction to all living beings like a black serpent? Who shall be the cleverest of all clever people in this cruel and terrible world, that is worldly existence? Which Brahmana knows and expounds the two parts? These are my twelve questions. Those excellent Brahmanas who know these are the greatest among those worthy of being praised. I will be their worshipper for a long time. Thinking thus, I wandered, I wandered over the whole of the earth. They said, The questions put by you give pain. We do salute you, thus I roamed over the entire earth. Even after seeking them over the entire earth, I did not get a single Brahmana. I sat on the top of Himalaya mountain and began to think again. All the Brahmanas have been seen. What should I do next? Even as I was thinking thus, this struck my mind. I have not yet gone to the excellent village of Halapa. Alapa is a village which is believed to be somewhere beyond the Himalayas and whenever the Kali Yuga ends, in order to bring up the Satya Yuga, the Brahmanas are expected to come from this particular village of Kalapa. 84,000 Brahmanas who are devoted to the study, listening and learning of the Vedas live there like embodied forms of penance. I will go to that place, saying so. I started then, walking through the sky, I crossed the snow-clad peak and reached the other side of Himalaya. 
saw the great jewel of a village situated on that holy spot. It extended to a hundred yojanas. It was full of different kinds of trees. There there were hundreds of excellent hermitages of meritorious persons. All the animals and other living beings did not have any animosity or wickedness. The whole village always rendered help to the sages performing sacrifices. Similarly, the assistance of good and virtuous persons never ceased, was always available there. There was a great, there was the great abode of sages, the imperishable abode in that village. The recitation of mantra with words such as swaha, swadha, and vashatkara and hantakara never ceased there. It is here, O son of Prita, that the seed for the sake of Prita Yuga is kept in river reserve. So also that of the solar and lunar races as well as that of Brahmanas. It means whenever that whole dharma extinguishes at the end of Kali Yuga and when the Krita Yuga starts, the Brahmanas from this Kalapagrama will come and will uphold the dharma. After reaching that place, I entered the hermitages of Brahmanas where excellent Brahmanas were engaged in discussing various doctrines. They were discussing and arguably, mutually, they appeared like the Vedas in embodied form. Some of those intelligent ones of noble souls refuted others as crows scatter the pieces of flesh in the sky. Be there, I raise my hand and said, O Brahmanas, of what avail are your shouts like the crying, cryings of the crows? Let this be heard. If you possess perfect knowledge, clarify my questions, the many unbearable questions I will ask. Brahmanas then said, Tell us, O Brahmana, you question. On hearing them, we shall answer them. This is indeed a great gain for us, but your honor put these questions. With a desire to be first to answer and saying, I first, they vied with one another and denied the opportunity to others to answer. Just as brave warriors go ahead saying, I will go first, I will go first, so also those Brahmanas came forward. When I put to them the old twelve questions on hearing them, those leading sages said in full mode, O oh, Brahmana, of what use are these childish questions put by you? These questions will be answered by one among us whom you consider the least learned. That is, these questions do not deserve to be answered by a learned man. I became surprised thereby. I considered myself contented and blessed. Thinking one of them to be the least learned among them, I said, let this one reply. Whereupon that boy named Sutanu, a boy having no boyishness or means ignorance, he spoke to me. Sutanu then said, My speech proceeds slowly, O Brahmana, on account of your silly, very simple questions, still I shall reply because you consider me the least learned one. The letters of alphabet are known to be 52. The syllable Om is the first among them. Then there are 14 vowels, the sparshas, that is the consonants of 33. Then there is the anuswara, M. Mm. There, there, is, there is also a visarjaniya, visarjaniya, aha, and jikhwa muliya, M, mm, mm, nya. These are all called as jikhwa muliya because they have been pronounced through the base of the, the root of the tongue. And Upadhyamnya, Upadhyamnya, that is A, this A, B, A, B, these are all called as Upadhyamnya. Thus, there are 52, these are 52. Thus, the number has been explained to you. O Brahmana, listen to the meaning of these. In this context, I will tell you an ancient legend. The events took place formerly in Mithila. In the abode of Brahmana, formerly in the city of Mithila, there was a Brahmana named Gautama. All the lords that are on the earth had been mastered by him. 
for Brahmana to exert himself earnestly in this matter for 31,000 years. Without the break of even a single moment, he continued to read or learn when he married. After some time, he, a son was born to Kautama. Behaving like a dullard, he learned Matkas, that is the only letters and letters of the alphabets only. After reading the Matkas, he did not learn anything else at all. When the father, who was extremely dejected and distressed, spoke to that sluggish fellow, Study, son, study, I will give you sweetmeats, else I shall give them to others and twist your ears. The son then replied, O oh, father, is it for the sake of sweetmeats that one should study? Covetousness be the reason. Study for men, it is said, should be for the sake of the attainment of the greatest good. And Kautama said, May you get the duration of the life of God Brahma. Since you say this, let this good sense be in you forever. Why do you not study further? The son then said, Everything that should be learned and understood has been learned here in the Matrikas itself. Thereafter, why should the truth be made more and more parched? Tell me. Father said, Oh boy, you are speaking in a mysterious manner. That thing which has been understood by you here, it again, O dear one, I wish to hear your words. The son then said, even after learning for 31,000 years, O oh Father, only different kinds of arguments and mistaken notions have been retained by you in your mind. Various dharmas have been mentioned in the darshana systems of philosophy by specifically pointing them out. When your mind is acting like a gracious matter in regard to them, I shall destroy that. You are making the study of the instructions, but you are not conversant with the real meaning of them. Those Brahmanas who rally solely on the wordings of the text are indeed by boots. Hence, I shall tell you those words which will wonderfully act as the solar splendor dispelling the darkness of delusion. Kara, that is the letter A, is described is by means to the Brahma, Ukara, the letter O is called Vishnu, Makara, Ma, is declared as Rudra. These three are spoken of as Gunas. Half Matra at the point of Om, because A, O, Ma, the three letters that form Om, Om. And the half matra at the top of Om is the greatest one. It is Sadashiva itself. This is the greatness of Omkara. This is the eternal city. Greatness of Omkara cannot be exactly described even in 10,000 years, even by means of a clear Gantas of the books and verses. Again, let that is mentioned at, uh, as the utmost essence to be listened to. Let us beginning with Kara A and ending with Kara Ha. The fourteen Manus, we are Swayambhuva, Swarochisa, Uttama, Vaivata, Tamasa, Chakshisa, the sixth one, Vaivaswata, the current Vaivaswata, the current one, Savarni, Brahma Savarni, Rudra Savarni, Dhatra Savarni, Dharma Savarni, Rautya and Bhutya. We have the complexions in the following order white, pearly white, red, coppery, yellow, honey, black, dark, smoky, and reddish brown, brown, pink color, variegated, and curtain dharam, having the color of a jujube fruit. Vaivaswata is Sara, Sutara, Sutara, also. Oh, dear father, he is seen as a black in color also. 33 letters beginning with the letter Ka and ending with Ha, the 33 Devas. Letters beginning with Ka and ending with Ka are known as the 12 Adityas, namely Bhata, Mitra, Riyaman, Katra, Varuna, Kushu, Bhuta, Hiranswan, Bhuta, Pavitra, 
from the tenth one Dostra and the eleventh by Dostra the eleventh Savitra the tenth one Dostra the eleventh and Vishnu who is called the twelfth Aditya. You can call this Gradasha Aditya, the twelve Adityas. He is the last born among the Adityas, but he is the superior. Vishnu is the last born among the Adityas, but he is superior to others in terms of fitness and power. Let us beginning with Ba and ending with Ba are known as the eleven Rudras. They are Kapali, Tungala, Bhima, Rupaksha, Vimanisita, Ajaksha, Sasana, Kasta, Tambhu. Vasana, Shasta, Shambhu, Inda, and Bhava. The eight letters beginning with Ba and ending with Sa consider to be the eight Vasus, Asta Vasus. They are Dhruva, Dhruva, Soma, Papa, Nala, Anila, Tusa, and Vadvasa. These are known as the eight Vasus. The letter, two letters Sa and Ba are reputed as Vishwins. Verse 33 are known. The Anuswara, Visarga, Dikramuliya, and Upadmatya are the four types of living beings, namely Jarayujas, those born of the womb, Andajas, those born through egg, Kedajas, those born through set, and Udbijas, trees and creepers that break down and with, through the seeds they grow. Thus, O oh dear Father, the living beings are declared. This is the important meaning that is mentioned just now. Listen to the true meaning now. Those men who resort to these devas and are devoted to holy rites become merged in that paternal position of half matra, that is Sadashiva. These living beings belonging to the four species of creatures became become liberated when mentally, verbally, and physically when worship suras. If in any chaitais these devas are not honored by sinners, the chaitais should not be held sacred even if God Dhamma himself were to speak it out. These devas are well established in the path of Vedas. In all heretical chaitaisas, they are denounced by men of evil action. Those vicious people who transgress these devas and perform the rites of penance, veritable gifts, and repetition of names do tremble, that is, wander in the path of Maruts. Alas, see the might of delusion of those who have not conquered themselves control themselves. Those sinners study matrikas but do not honor the suras. When only study the matrikas and they do not honor the suras who are behind those matrikas. Sutanu then continued to tell, answer the questions posed by Narada. On hearing his words, the father became extremely surprised. He asked him many questions. And he, the son, replied them and then replied them then and then. Your first question about Matrikas has been clarified by me. Listen to the clarification of the second question on the wonderful abode of five times five. The five elements, the five karmendriyas, organs of action, and nonendriyas, organs of sense. The five vishayas, objects of sense, the mind and intellect and ahankara, there is a cosmic ego, prakriti and purusa, the 25th one, that is sadashiva, these are the principles called five elements, five, means totally it takes up 25. Or the five karmendriyas are the hand, the foot and the genitals and the organ through which we uh, sent out the excreta, our anus, and then our walk, that is the tongue through which we speak. These are the five karmendriyas. And the five non-endriyas, the organs of sense, are the eyes, ear, nose, and then tongue and the skin. Those are the different, five different organs of senses called as panchendriya. The five vishayas, the objects of senses, 
that which is because we sense something that vasana is called as vasana through the nostrils and that is uh, smelling through the nose or the tasting through the tongue hearing through the ears and seeing through the eyes and through the skin these are the five different we say as the objects of sense of the mind then the mind intellect and ahankara prakriti and purusha together if you count it becomes totally 25 sadashiva these are the principles called 25 times 5 the house made by them is the body the house is made up of these parmendriyas nanendriyas vishayas and then the mind intellect and other things of course i think the first one we have dropped it that is a five different elements which begins with that five elements are the pancha bhutas akasha vayu agni prithvi and the water jala these are the five different elements so together totally it becomes 25 the house is made up of made by them is the body who who understand this exactly attains shiva founders of vedanta call them the intellect as the multiformed woman it means it prefers to various objects it undergoes various forms but with the contact of one object dharma it is only one though it might have had many forms the knower of this true meaning does not fall into the hell what is not mentioned by the sages what does not honor and accept the deities that which is full of lust learned men call such statement bandham bandham chitra katha chitra katha bondage caused by strange thought now listen to the answer of the fifth question the one lobha greed only is the crocodile in the ocean of life it is due to greed sins are committed it is from greed that anger is aroused and lust too takes its origin from greed in fact everything mentioned below proceeds from greed delusion deception false prestige thieftness desire to take away other people's wealth ignorance and absence of wisdom the robbing of other people's wealth molestation of other men's wives all risky adventures and the commission of atrocities all these are the result of greed this greed along with delusion could it be conquered by one who has conquered his own self hypocrisy hatred censure slander mongering and malice all these occur in greedy people who have not won over their own selves they may be persons knowing all the great shastras thoroughly they may have learned much and they may be spellers of doubts being victims of greed the face downfall those who are affected by greed and anger are devoid of the conduct of testa that is well behaved respected people are like persons with sweet speech who keep a razor within they are like wells covered with glass these people who have the motive and capacity try in various ways these ruthless ones among human kind destroy the ways of all out of greed or out of greed will people destroy all the pathways which people having the motive and the capacity they make these pretenders to pity are insignificant creatures They adorn themselves with the external symbols of pity but they, they rob the entire universe these persons who are greedy should always be known as greed sinners janaka yuvanashwa vishnu me prasena chet and many other overlords of people have attained heaven because they had stood the greed hands those who avoid greed cross the ocean of worldly existence others will be swallowed by the crocodile and doubt crocodile known as lobha undoubtedly 
then o brahmana understand the eight classes of brahmanas matra brahmana kshatriya anuchana anuchana brahmana rishikalpa rishi and muni these eight types of brahmanas have been mentioned at outset in the vedas the latter ones mention i mean the one which is mentioned in the beginning is of the inferior type and that which is mentioned in the following in the sequence consequently consequently better than the earlier ones on account of the excellence of their learning and good conduct a person who has been born in a brahmana family is caste alone is that of brahmana but he has not approached a guru for the purpose of learning and is devoid of all the holy rites he is called as matra person who is straight forward has a good ulterior motive ulterior motives practices the precepts of the vedas is quiet and merciful and always utters the truth is called as brahmana person who has learned at last and at least one branch of the veda along with its kalpa and all the angas who is in habitually engaged in all the six holy duties and is well conversant with dharma who is known by the name shrotriya a brahmana who is well conversant with the vedas and vedangas and their essential principles who is a pure man who has benefit of sins who is excellent and intelligent and who has the number of disciples eagerly engaged in the study of the vedas he is called he is known as anuchana person endowed with all the good qualities of anuchana who has restrained his senses with regular performance of yajna and study of the vedas and who partakes of the food that remains after everyone has taken the food is called bhuna the good people he who has attained all knowledge both vedic and secular who has restrained his senses and who always stays in a hermitage is called rishikalpa which is nearly equal to rishi person who has sublimated his sexual urge who is very excellent who has regular and simple food habits who is free from suspicions who is truthful and is competent to curse or bless shall be called as rishi person who refrains from worldly activities completely who is conversant with all principles who is devoid of lust and anger who is engaged in meditation and is free from activities who has cured the senses and who consider a lump of clay and a block of gold on par is a muni those who are exalted by family pedigree with learning and good behavior are the leading brahmanas designated as prasthas prasthas they are adorned in shravana bhavana and other sacrificial rites thus the types of brahmanas have been described now listen to the days of the beginning of the yugas the ninth day of the bright half of the month of kritika vartika is glorified as the first day of krita yuga third day in the bright half of the month of vaishakha is called the first day of krita yuga the new moon day in the month of magha is known by learned men as the first day of dwapara yuga Thirteenth day in the dark half of the month of Bhadrapada is known as the first day of Kali Yuga. These first days of the yugas are known as the days causing everlasting benefits if charitable gifts are offered on these days. One should know that the gifts made and Harmavanas, that is fire, sec- fire worship or oblation to gods, performed on these four Yugadi days, that is the uh, first day of those yugas yield everlasting benefits charitable gifts made over a period of 100 years in the course of a yuga and those made on a single day that is the first day of yugas bore equal benefits first day of the yugas have been described now listen to the first days of manvantaras 
The order is the same as that of Manvantaras mentioned before in the earlier, earlier verses. The ninth day of the bright half of half month of Ashwayuja is for the Swayam Bhuva Manvantara. The twelfth day of the Kartika, the third day of the bright half of month of Pritra, third day of the bright half of the month of Madhrapada, the new moon day in the month of Puna, eleventh day of the bright half of the month of Prishya, the fifth day of the month of Ashada, the seventh day of the month of Magha, the eighth day of the dark half of the month of Shravana, the full moon day of the month of Ashada, the full moon day in the month of Kartika, the full moon day in the month of Alguna, the full moon day of the month of Tritra, and the full moon day of the month of Krishna, these are the first days of the Manvantaras, causing everlasting benefits for the charitable gifts made on these days. The seventh day in the month of Magha, called by Brahmanas as Ratasaptami, is a day on which formerly the sun obtained the chariot. Charitable gifts are made, Havana is performed, or sacrifice is made on that day, Ratasaptami. All these yield everlasting benefits. It eradicates all poverty and it is considered as causing pleasure to the sun. Listen exactly to that person whom learned men call Nityo Vijata, Nityo Vijata, one who always causes affliction, Nityo Vijata, one who causes affliction to living beings, he who begs every day cannot attain heaven, just like caves, he afflicts the living beings. That man of sinful soul goes to Naraka, since he causes perpetual affliction to others. The person who, have, who having pondered over by what acts of mine have I been born here, where shall I have to go from this place? Opted suitable measures, it is called as Daksha Daksha, cleverest of all the clever people. In the course of eight months, in a day, in the early stages of life, or in the course of the whole life, person must do the karma and act whereby he attains happiness in the end. The expounders of Vedanta have mentioned two paths that of Archi. The flame, white light, and that of Bhuma, smoke. The person who proceeds through the path of Bhuma returns to samsara. He who goes along the path of Hatri is attained liberation. The path of Bhuma is attained through Yajnas, and the path of Hatri is obtained through Nishkarmya, that means cessation of all activities with motives and desires. Yet there is Nishkama Karma. The path other than these two is called Pakanda or heretic path. The only path that one takes other than these two is always called as Pakanda, the heretic path. He who does not accept Devas or performs none of the holy rites enjoyed by Manu, enjoined by Manu, does not go through any of these two paths. This is essential principle. Thus, O oh excellent Brahmana, your questions have been clarified in accordance with my capacity. Tell me whether it is good or otherwise. Reveal yourself who you are now. Thus ended chapter 5 of Komarika Khanda in the Maheshwara Khanda. Namaste Sarada Devi, Mashmira Puravasini, Kwamaham Pratyenityam, Vidya Dhanancha Dehime. Bye.